Hello friends, welcome to our channel Chemistry with SK. In this session, we'll see the Colorado law. Actually, this is very very important for various classes. It may be for 10th, 11th, and 12th. Uh, sometimes for engineering, sometimes for pharmacy, and even for higher studies of UG and PG science. So, as a part of electrochemistry, it is very necessary. So, uh, depending on the syllabus, depth of the syllabus is also different. So, here I am explaining it in terms of engineering chemistry uh, as per the uh, requirement of syllabus. And what we'll see in that? So, we'll see basically introduction, then the statement and expression, and the applications. So, let us start. As a part of introduction, we should know that Friedrich Kohlroth was a German physicist and he has investigated the conductive properties of electrolytes and contributed to the knowledge of their behavior. Actually, this is based on moment of ions or we can say this is regarding independent moment of ions at infinite dilution. So first of all, we'll see what is mean by infinite dilution. So infinite dilution is the maximum dilution above which further dissociation is not possible. Further dissociation of weak electrolyte is not possible. That maximum dissociation or uh, maximum dilution is called as infinite dilution. It means at that particular point, no further ions will be produced or there is no increase in conductance also. It means the conductance value for the weak electrolyte also, it remains constant and that stage is said to be infinite dilution. Uh, so uh, let us see the statement and expressions. We can say that at infinite dilution, so I have mentioned what is meant by infinite dilution. So at infinite dilution, each ion migrates independently. It means whatever the ions are there, there may be positive ions, negative ions. So all the ions are moving independently. There is an independent moment, that is one thing. The ions are migrating, each ion is migrating independently of its co-ion. It means apart from that co-ion of each ion. It means suppose H plus is there, then it will be uh, Cl minus may be its co-ion. Whatever the positive and negative ions are there, these are co-ions of each other. So irrespective of its co-ion, each ion is moving independently and it is contributing a definite share, some share to the total equivalent conductance of the electrolyte. It means whatever the total conductance is, there is a total conductance which has been considered, which has been calculated, which has been observed. So that will contain the even smaller conductance value of each and every particle, each and every ion. Okay, these are the two terms. One is there is an independent moment and each ion is contributing something. See, these are the two terms. Okay. So let us say uh, the statement in another way. The Colorado law state that the equivalent conductivity of an electrolyte at infinite dilution is equal to sum of conductances of the cations and anions. It means what we can say? The total conductivity of an electrolyte at infinite dilution is equal to sum of conductance values of all cations and all anions. So uh, we can say it can be uh, shown as we can say suppose this is lambda zero, this is capital lambda, small lambda. Okay, you might know. So this is the total equivalent conductance and this total equivalent conductance is nothing but the addition of or summation of conductance values of all cations and all anions. So this lambda plus stands for cation, this minus stands for anion and this zero stands for infinite dilution. So the total equivalent conductance is equal to the equivalent conductance of all cations and equivalent conductance of all anions into the solution. It means we can say each ion, there are the two terms as I mentioned. So each ion is moving independently and every, every ion is contributing something in the total conductivity or in the total equivalent conductivity. So let us see the applications. In applications, it is, uh, we can say mainly, uh, this is useful for finding lambda zero that is uh, equivalent conductance for weak electrolyte. The problem is, the equivalent conductance for weak electrolyte cannot be obtained directly because uh, it is very difficult practically to determine the equivalent conductance value for weak electrolyte. But by using this concept or by using this Colorado law, it is possible to find out such a uh, conductance value. For example, if you have to find out the value of acetic acid, then it can be calculated from the uh, conductance values of these particular molecules. So the theoretical values of HCl, NaCl and CH3CONA that is sodium acetate, this can be considered and from these values we can calculate the value of acetic acid. Uh, let us see how. So 
let us consider we have we require acetic acid that is equivalent conductance of acetic acid so what we require we require acetate ion and h plus ion so where the acetate ions are available yes this is our acetate ion so what we can say we require this acetate ion right then we require h plus also so where h plus is available so h plus is available here so if you are considering the equivalent conductance of this molecule and this molecule then we can calculate the acetic acid conductivity of acetic acid but we can see as we require only CH3COO minus and H plus. So here we are getting Na as extra and here we are getting Cl as extra, right? Because here we did, didn't require Cl. Because here HCl is present and we require only as H plus ions. So CH3COO minus and H plus, these, these only two ions are required. But we have uh, some more data. So in that case, what we can do here, sodium is extra here, chlorine is extra. It means if we are adding the conductance values of this, that sodium acetate plus HCl and from that we are subtracting an initial value, then it is possible to find out. For example, you can see here the conductance value of sodium acetate plus conductance value of HCl and minus conductance value of NaCl. So what will happen? You can see this plus Na and minus Na will get cancelled, this minus Cl and this plus Cl will get cancelled and this is CH3CO minus and this is H plus. In this way we can say that by using this we can find out the equivalent conductance of weak electrolyte theoretically. No need to do practicals because the practicals are uh, complicated for weak electrolytes and it may take some time. So no need to find it practically, theoretically also we can determine. So in C, next application, it is also useful for calculation of ionic conductance values. It means ionic conductance at infinite dilution can also be calculated by combining the Colorado law and transport number concept. Actually, the transport number concept uh, may or may not be known to you. So in just brief, you can say the transport number of an ion is the fraction of total current carried by, by that ion. So here, the transport number of an ion is the fraction of total current carried by an ion. ion. It means as we require, uh, as we know about the mole fraction, okay, what is the formula for mole fraction? You remember that. Suppose we require the mole fraction for a particular uh, solute, then we are taking that amount of solute divided by amount of solute and solvent. Similarly, the transport number is also the fraction of total current carried by that ion. So we can say the transport number of that cation at infinite dilution is equal to lambda zero of cations it means equivalent conductance of cations divided by equivalent of equivalent conductance of cation plus anion this is considered as lambda zero that is the total conductance value or we can say equivalent conductance value and this remains as it is so we can say transport number equal to lambda zero plus upon lambda zero uh, the next application is for determining the ionic product of water the solubility and solubility product of sparingly soluble electrolyte so this can also be calculated okay it means ionic product of water, solubility and solubility product, especially for sparingly soluble salts or electrolytes can also be calculated. Uh, one more application is degree of dissociation of weak electrolytes can also be calculated from lambda zero values or we can say equivalent conductance values. It means we can find out the degree of dissociation also, the extent of dissociation that is alpha value. Uh, let us see, uh, one more application is determination of degree of ionization of weak electrolyte. To what extent there is a ionization that can also be determined. The Colorado law can be used for determining the degree of ionization of weak electrolyte at any concentration. So that's it for today. Thank you. See you in next video. Bye bye.